Hey guys, Stefan here again talking this time about blockchain technology and the so-called use cases and why Bitcoin maximalists are generally skeptical of that other than in the case of Bitcoin. So what's what's going on here? There's a lot of people and okay, this was really popular a couple of years ago, but you still see the remnants of this meme sort of floating about this whole idea that oh look, all these other people are going to use blockchain technology. Oh wow, cool. But then what you've seen over the last few years is basically most of those cases didn't pan out. They either weren't profitable or they just they just weren't feasible. They weren't cost effective. So what's going on here? It's kind of like people who sort of like the idea of Bitcoin and you know it's really hot and it's on the news and they want to sort of get into it but they're not willing to go all the way. They weren't willing to go all the way to the idea of sound money, censorship resistance, you know trustless money they sort of go halfway. So they sort of say, oh, I like Bitcoin. I don't like Bitcoin, but I am a fan of blockchain, right? So that's sort of the way a lot of these large bank CEOs would come out a couple of years ago and answer the, when they were asked about the question of Bitcoin. What that really is, though, is because they're not going all the way, they're sort of doing like a cargo cult science. So uh, let me show you this article here. So this is the article for Wik on Wikipedia for cargo cults. And the funny thing is, it's it's this idea that you know various ritualistic acts, such as the building of an airplane runway, will result in the appearance of material wealth, you know, such as cargo via Western airplanes. So what you can see here is, by recreating just one component of this broader architecture, this broader infrastructure, without appreciating the broader environment that that is built in, will cause you to make errors, right? You will think that you can get all the benefits of this thing, or at least a fair amount of the benefits of this thing, just by recreating one component. But that's not how it really works, right? So one of the best, if there was one article I would send to people on this, it's this one. It's blockchain won't make banks any nimbler. And I'll put it in the description for this video by my friend Safety in a Moose. And yeah, I mean, you should read the whole article, but basically, what he's pointing out here is that blockchains are not an efficient way to store transactions. They're not an efficient way to store data. It's actually every full node storing the full copy of the entire ledger. That's, it's not a system designed for efficiency. It's a, it's a system that's designed to live in a kind of adversarial environment where you can't necessarily trust other people. Right. So the problem here is that some of these banks, when they want to enter into partnerships with each other and have this kind of messaging system and whatever, they, to some level, they can trust each other. It's different to if you want to be a sovereign individual who runs his own full node and has his own money. That is a, those are two separate, totally separate uh, things and two totally, you need totally separate technologies to deal with that or efficiently deal with that. Right. So it's, look, it's, it's not saying that there could never be a profitable blockchain technology. I mean, there could be, but it's just unlikely, right? I think a lot of these people have just had the wool pulled over their eyes. So, you know, I'm sure some of these big blockchain companies or whatever, they got funded, they got all this venture funding and they went and sold something that, you know, maybe they oversold the benefits of it, right? So one particular example here was R3. So they started in 2014. And you can see here that um, in this particular blog post, which is actually quite interesting because they had sort of changed tactics a bit, or at least the language used to describe these things changed. You can see they sort of shifted from the terminology of blockchain to try and shift into something a little bit more of a broader category, which is distributed ledgers, right? So you can see this post, which is from April 2016, right? And so I, as I view it, this blog post is almost like a somewhat capitulation. They were kind of coming back and going, oh yeah, actually, no, nah, we don't really need a blockchain. We'll just call our thing a distributed ledger. And you can, if you read this article, they sort of talk through some of that. So he's talking here about why, you know, um, what is the defining category, category, characteristic of blockchain systems. So he's talking about a few things like consensus, validity, uniqueness, immutability, so on. And then he's talking about how actually that's not really solving the financial services business problem. So you can see here, there, that's almost a a giveaway there and I mean he's, he's admitting it right so he's saying okay well out of that we only want this that and the other so consensus validity blah 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 and he's saying oh wait actually yeah 
we are not building a blockchain. So you can see there, there's almost like a capitulation. So hopefully that helps explain that. And then uh, one other thing that's actually interesting is also this article. So this was from April 2017. And you can see how here there was a bunch of banks who all left. They joined R3 back when it started. They put in a few million each to join the consortium. But then all these banks left. Goldman Sachs, Banco Santander, Morgan Stanley, National Australia Bank, JP Morgan, and I'm pretty sure some others left at the same time. So I just didn't find an article for it. But... Hopefully that helps shed some light here on this whole blockchain technology meme and how there was a bit of a cottage industry of you know, blockchain companies and then other consulting firms and other big four, whatever, who would come out and basically consult on that. But if I had to summarize, most of this stuff is just kind of like a blockchain for blockchain's sake. So I hope that shed some light for you guys.